particular introduction uh, is going to be used on several of them as we go through the various topics. Just excuse me while I uh, get into the more traditional interview position. It was when Brisbane grew up and everything was going on at that time. There was just so many productions involved and this was the centrepiece. So uh, I, I was, you know, so were you living down in Bangalore at that I was time? still living down here, but I, I used to uh, spend, you know, at least three months a year working up in Brisbane. Sometimes I'd get two or three productions. So I had friends up there that would, uh, where I'd stay and um, I'd ride a push bike in the Performing Arts Centre each day and work in the studio with the, performing, uh, with the computer music instrument. Um, while this was happening with Mike, we'd have meetings. Um, he'd show me drawings and um, the machines were rebuilt but we only had artistic impressions to work on and so it was a very uh, creative process. Um, he, he was a very self-confident person Mike and he had very strong ideas and um, so uh, there was a lot of tussling going about how you know which way to go with each soundtrack. There were 17 soundtracks um, they, we calculated the time it would take for at the speed these floats would uh, travel at to pass so that we made a loop, that the idea was to have a looping soundtrack that was seamlessly looped but lasted long enough so that you heard the whole soundtrack while the visual was prominent and then the next one would come up so there was a bit of an overlap it was a, a very challenging job to come up with both appropriate soundtracks for these bizarre and quite wacky, some of them, uh, animatronic art pieces uh, that, uh, you know, enhanced the visual and um, helped convey the message that the artist was trying to convey, which was obvious, in many cases, quite abstract. Or, and as I said before, there were um, some pieces were quite lyrical and um, you know that the unicorn one is one that stood out because it was a loop, the, it, the parade went both day and night so it was illuminated at night and some of them were funny some of them were just quite bizarre like I said the, uh, the cricket meets its match stood out as a, a very wacky idea and uh, we had we had a, for that one we had an excerpt from uh, the famous incident Greg Chapel bowling underarm um, was part of the soundtrack to that. I remember, uh, you know, it's a long time ago. So, and unfortunately, a lot of that, all, all of the music, uh, seems to have been lost. I had my house burned down in '94, so I lost my versions of it. And um, I'm not sure. I haven't really had contact with Mike Mullen since the event, so I don't know whatever happened to the soundtracks. Well, if they are in existence, they'll be in the. Uh Briar Library, because that's where the whole artistic output in relation to uh, Expo 88 uh, has been gifted to be archived for educational purposes and for legacy purposes. Um, and I'm assuming that that Mike chose it because he knew that uh, Sir Lou Edwards has gifted his whole uh, collection. Uh, not only his expo stuff, but his whole life effectively, um, into the prior library. So um, it's there for people to, uh, to see. But I, to be honest, I don't recall seeing any reference to the audio. It was more his personal yes, drawings yeah. and creations. Um, yeah, it was very much a Mike Mullins retrospective, in a sense. That, that and, and I mean, you know, there was so much and I, I, I guess that's where his primary focus was on. He was in the visual arts field and my job was to provide the audio, but he had strong input for that. And I remember even with the Unicorn, um, uh, it, we had quite a, I remember he made a great suggestion there. We ended up slowing down one of the, the soundtracks to uh, half speed. And so that, you know, he had quite a bit of input into the, the musical content and he was- So all this work, this was obviously done prior to the opening of Expo. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it was all in the um, building up period when... when um, so that must have been incredibly hard to you, to try and visualise the impact upon a crowd that you had no idea as to how large it was going to be or how much 
love that audience was going to uh, lay onto the uh, creative process you were involved in? Well, I knew it was going to be a really unique event. Uh, I didn't really grasp the scope of, of Expo and its uh, the amazing things that were presented there. But um, I, uh, I even just the, the name, the Qantas Light Fantastic um, Parade, had to live up to that and um <laughs>